Hello, this is Rocky Mountain Edibles. I just found one of my very favorite plants. So the plant I just found right now is called Lomatium gray eye or milfoil Lomatium. I'm going to go ahead and dig this up and show you how to go about identifying what this plant is. So I'm just using my digging stick here to try to free the root up a little bit. These tap roots are fairly long so you have to dig down a little ways. The long taproot is actually one of the ways you identify this particular species because in the Lomatium genus there's actually another plant that looks very similar to this and one of the ways you differentiate between this and its look-alike is this one has a long taproot its look-alike Lomatium bicolor actually has more of a round taproot. So I just dug up this milfoil lomatium and there's a few characteristics I wanted to point out to you. First of all you'll notice that the flower head is comprised of yellow petals and that's one of the defining characteristics to help to separate this genus from a closely related genus that many times can look somewhat similar. Um, that other genus is the Somopteris genus. Usually those have a white or sometimes purple color petals. Another thing you'll notice is this is a fairly small plant with regards to the leaf structure and the pedicels and so forth. Those closely related genuses within the EPACA family are ones like Lomatium, Lucinian, Oreoxus, Somopteris, and so forth. So this is actually in the Lomatium genus and one of the ways that a person can tell it's in the Lomatium genus is in part by looking at the yellow flowers. You'll also notice that this has a very long taproot. I mentioned a little bit ago that that's one of the ways to tell the difference between this plant, milfoil Lomatium, or Lomatium gray eye in Latin, versus a closely related and very similar looking plant known as Lomatium bicolor. We're going to take a closer look at the compound dumbbell. Remember the compound dumbbell is one of the defining characteristics of the APACA family. And we'll also take a look at the leaf structure as well. So you'll notice that of course this is a compound dumbbell. So remember an umbell, think umbrella. You'll notice here at the base of each umbell uh, is what's called an involosal bractlet. And one of the defining characteristics of Lomatium gray eye is, you can just barely make it out, but these involosal bracklets are described as filiform, which means string-like. So they're noticeable, but they're not very substantial. You'll notice that the leaf itself is ternate, or divided into three sections and it's pinnately compound. Pinnate means that it actually, you have little leaflets coming off on each side of the axis. The entire plant is glabrous, which means it is smooth. In other words, it doesn't have minute hairs along the pedicels or the leaves. You'll notice that the ultimate divisions are numerous, so you can see tons of little leaf divisions there on that plant. That's another defining characteristic of this plant. Now we're going to take a look at the root. You'll notice that it has a uh, outer covering or a woody base and uh, of course you would want to remove that before trying to consume this plant. I'm just going to kind of go ahead and break this open just to show you something here. You'll notice that this is very fibrous. This is not nearly as succulent of a root as what you find in some of the other Lomatiums and especially in the closely related genus Somopteris. Um, I have eaten this root occasionally 
it does have kind of a carrot like almost celery like taste to it um, but like I said it's very fibrous um, it is edible uh, but it isn't quite as sweet tasting as some of the other plants within this genus and other closely related genuses there is a slightly sweet taste to it so anyway you'll notice that the core of the root is especially fibrous that's very dense and very hard to chew through a lot of times you want to cook the roots anyway occasionally I will eat them raw with this plant I just showed you you can actually eat the flowers which actually taste fairly good you can eat the leaves as well as kind of like an herb and you can also eat the roots I'm not really going to be harvesting any more of this plant just because I have not found very many in this area I've only found about a dozen or so and I want to make sure that I'm practicing good harvesting ethic I would please encourage you to do the same thanks so I just want to remind you that it's very important to make sure of your identification before I ever attempt eating a plant I make sure that I have encountered that plant numerous times I make sure that I am absolutely 100 percent certain of its identification please do not think that any of the identification processes that I've mentioned are sufficient for identification because there are a few other characteristics and things that I look for to identify a plant that I don't necessarily mention in this video. So please do your own research, make sure you're being safe out there, and enjoy the great outdoors. Mm -hmm.